Yeah, so this microphone isn't switched on. How's it going? Now, while it may seem like today is about making pointless and easily avoidable mistakes, today is actually about making arrows. When I first started in archery, I really wanted to learn to make my own arrows, but I got a little discouraged by images like this and these things, so I decided that $10 an arrow was really a small price to pay for the continued use and functionality of my hands. However, the other day I was scrolling through my YouTube comments and I came across one that really caught my eye. I had to do a double take on this to make sure it was actually true, but as it turns out, it is. And I really have to thank you guys for pointing something out to me that I clearly had no prior knowledge of. Point is though, that realizing my hand is already kind of messed up gave me the confidence I needed to go out and make my first set of arrows. And you know, I found that it was a not very difficult and very rewarding process. So. Today, we're going to go through step by step on how to make your own set of arrows for less than $2 a piece. I want to start out by saying that most of the knowledge I have on making arrows came from this book. This is the Dowel Arrow Handbook by Nicholas Tomihama. Now, this is a fantastic guide. You can pick it up on Amazon for about $11. Fun fact, you can also pick up what looks like this book, but is actually just the cover wrapped around a solid bar of gold, which justifies the $975 price tag. But fun facts aside, it takes you through everything you need to know from sourcing materials to finishing your arrows with target or hunting points. Pretty good, right? Now if for some reason you've decided to keep watching this video instead of just going and buying the book, let's hop into it. So step one is going to be sourcing all of your materials. In the interest of saving some money, I always order my points, knocks, and feathers direct from China. I've never had an issue with quality, and you can really find these pieces for super cheap. I mean, a third to a quarter as much as you'd find them in an archery shop. It takes a little time for these direct from China components to show up, but it's worth it when you can spend only about 20 or $25 to make a dozen arrows. Now that you've ordered those parts and they've taken a little while to show up, it's time to head to the hardware store and grab yourself some dowels, keeping in mind that dowels are not made to be arrows, so 90% of them are going to be crap. This is the split I got after searching through the entire bin, and that's even with taking some that weren't quite ideal. Also keep it in the back of your head that if you are wanting to make 12 arrows, get at least 14 or 15 dowels as you're probably going to break some during the process. So what are you looking for? Well, these are poplar dowels, and that's a good place to start. If your bow is less than 60 pounds, then a 5 16 inch dowel is what you're looking for. Any more than that, you can go up to a 3 8 If you're trying to make war arrows, or arrows with which to hunt dinosaurs, go with a half inch dowel. And quality wise, make sure the dowel has no cracks, no knots, and no splitting. After that, try to find ones with as little grain runoff as possible, though it is fine if it has some, as long as it's pretty gradual. It's alright if they're a little bit crooked, you can always straighten them later. It's more important that the grain is straight and that they're free of knots and cracks. Now, dowels obviously aren't sold in 28 inch lengths, so you're going to have to cut them down, but that's actually helpful for you because if you find one that has a really bad knot at one end, there's probably still a 28 inch section that will work for the arrow. Now, I have never been more genuinely disappointed that I couldn't use a tool in my entire life. This thing is my child. But anyway, I'm going to go back to being a hand tool using peasant for a second. We're going to mark these all to length and then cut them. Here we go. I hate this part because this is where you're going to break some of those shafts that you just bought and cut to length. But it's always better to find flaws sooner than later when you have more time into them. So give each shaft a good hard flex and be listening out for any splintering or cracking. While I'm here, I'm also dividing them into stiff and more flexible shafts so I can make better match sets later. I've never found it necessary to do much more than hand straightening. The dowels I buy are generally pretty straight already. I usually just have to take out some minor bends. If there are any major kinks, you can always use a hard round surface like this propane bottle and maybe a little bit of heat from a heat gun if it's really stubborn. Quick little straightness test is to spin them on your thumb. Any bouncing or jittering indicates a crooked dowel. If they spin nice and smooth, then they're straight. First off, there is no way to sand a cylindrical object without people making jokes about it, and I embrace that. I appreciate it. Put all you want in the comments section. I give you my blessing. All right, now that you're finished doing that, I'm just going to sand each of these shafts down to 220 grit and then wipe them down with a little bit of boiled linseed oil. After they're oiled, I'm just taking a second to burnish each shaft with a glass jar, but you could use a polished piece of metal as well. This compresses the top fibers of the wood, making them less prone to breaking and also smoothing them out. This could not be more basic if you use the right tool. The first set of arrows I made, I tried to use my belt sander to file in the tapers. And while that worked, they are a little bit off center. It's better to just buy one of these tools. They're 10 bucks. And if you can use a pencil sharpener, you can use this. 
Also, make sure that any grain runoffs point back towards the knock, that way if the arrow ever does break in the bow, it's not going to stab through the back of your hand. It also helps if once you're finished, you take all these shavings and you light them on fire. Ah, this is pointless. Now we just attach the points and the knocks. I'm using some regular high temp hot glue for this. I just melt it on with a lighter and then press the points and the knocks into place. Pretty easy, you just gotta make sure they're seated on there all the way. Real quick, it is super bad news bears if any of those grain runoffs are pointed towards the back of your hand because if the arrow breaks in the bow, what you're gonna have is a really sharp mini arrow which can easily stab into your hand or arm. So when you glue on your knocks, make sure any grain runoffs are facing upwards and pointing back towards you. For all my fletching, I use this old Jojan 6 bay fletching jig that I found at a garage sale. This thing really does make fletching go super fast, super easy. All you have to do is seat the feather into the clamp, apply a thin layer of glue, and then make sure that the feather is contacting the shaft along its entire length. It really could not be more simple. To hold the feathers on, I'm using this bottle of glue that has millions of tiny gorillas in it. I'm not sure how they make it cheaper than regular fletching glue, but it seems to work just as well if not a little bit better. If you don't have a fletching jig like this, I'll refer you to another book by Nicholas Tomihama, and I think he has a video series about it as well. It shows how to make a super simple, easy to make fletching jig that will absolutely get you started. Fletching is my favorite part of the arrow making process. It's where you get to see your arrows come together and start to look like, well, arrows. Now, I made this little collaring jig to help maintain proper tension. You don't need this, but it helps. Start by tying a clove hitch around the shaft and then wrap about an eighth of an inch up the quills of the feathers. To finish, I'm going to create a loop, wrap the end through three or four times, pull it tight, and then cover the whole thing with a little bit of craft glue. Okay, we're almost done here. Just set them aside to let that glue dry for a bit and then sit back and admire your handiwork before you inevitably break one on the very first shot. There's a foot of snow right now, which is making things a little bit interesting, but you know, improvise, adapt, overcome, and if that means becoming a snow gremlin, so be it. Even though I did the absolute minimum in terms of tuning on these, they fly really well, and I was surprised at the consistency I could get from something so basic. So now that they're finished, let's do a real quick cost breakdown analysis for making one arrow. Buying all my parts online means that I spend about 96 cents on the dowels, 30 for the feathers, 25 for the points, and 10 or 12 cents for the knocks, which brings our total cost to right around $2 or a little bit less. Keep in mind that I fletch my arrows with two feathers, so they're going to be slightly more if you fletch yours with three or four, but they're still very cost effective at less than a fifth of what you'd pay for most finished arrows. And there we have it. I do hope this helps you make your first set of arrows because it really is super fun and easy. But before I go, I do want to share one more thing I learned during the process of making this video, which is that this microphone never worked in the first place. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed. That's it for today. Archer out.